I seen this shirt that says, I could do whatever I want, whenever I want, however I want, except I have to ask my wife first. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If my wife says so. <laughs> exactly. It makes your life a little more peaceful, you know. Exactly right. Okay, so home defense. Now, a lot of times people think, uh, my castle doctrine. You know, you're thinking, I could shoot anybody that comes into my property, and I'm free. Not true, right? Now, some people even think that, I, you know, they ask, if you see somebody coming to your driveway, trying to steal your Mercedes Benz with a crowbar breaking your window, what are you going to do? First thing they're going to say is, I'm going to get my gun, and I'm going to go threaten them. So, you know, when you have a gun out there, aiming at somebody and saying like, hey, stop or whatever the there's a very high chance you're gonna have a gunfight okay now the law does not allow you to protect your personal property with a deadly weapon mm -hmm. okay so unless he has a deadly weapon if you're sitting in your living room and if you hear somebody trying to kick your door in and you know for a fact this guy is crazy or his intruder trying to do whatever harm on you right People think you could shoot right through the door, and sometimes you see, you know, you see that on the YouTube too, you know, because you know you see somebody shooting through the door. Now, there's a thing called, and sometimes some states will tell you, you define, you know, you know, even though you shot through the door, we're not gonna charge you with any criminal charge. They are still gonna have a civil lawsuit. Always follow the civil lawsuit, and that becomes a completely different story. Okay, so uh, if somebody trying to kick your door in, and if they have a gun with you. You should have your gun ready, right? Mm -hmm. But don't shoot at him. Run through that back door. Now, if you live in an apartment or where you don't have access to back door, the front is the only exit that you have, then you have to stand your ground, be ready. And when they, when you feel the immediate danger is up on you, then you could fire, right? But then if there's a way out, you have to get out first. Now, if you run out the back door, and if you see another guy standing with a weapon, then, then you have to protect yourself. Now, another thing is, that somebody's trying to kick your door in, you're in the living room, you got your gun out, but you got your family upstairs, right? Now, it does, at this point, legally, you could stand your ground and, and get ready because you, you can't run, you got your family with you, right? So that's okay. Now, a lot of times people get a little too excited, a little too, you know, uh, edgy, and they tend to shoot too fast, okay? So keep that in mind. Now, but I also say, you know how I say, you know, what's for the video and what's for the real world okay now a lot of times you can't really decide if the bad guy has a gun or a knife or whatever but you know he means to harm you right and i always say it's better to be it's better to plead to 12 than be carried out by six okay so if you survive and if you have to deal with the legal consequences at least you're alive to you know deal with it but if you're trying to you know, be hundred percent certain that you are within all the legal rights. You're gonna get shot because the bad guys, he doesn't have any legal bond before him. Mm -hmm. He's just gonna shoot you every every chance they got. And a lot of time, people say like, you know, what about like, you know, fair fight? You know, if somebody's coming into your house, the fair fight is already off. Okay, mm -hmm. you know, you just have to make sure that you survive the fight. Okay, not him. Okay, so but again, know your boundaries, but. You know, if you feel like you need to do something, you need to take action really quick. Now, if you do end up, unfortunately, if you do end up shooting somebody or, you know, trying to protect yourself, first thing you do is say, make sure the premise is safe. Okay, if he had a gun or knife or whatever, make sure he's disabled before you take that away. Okay, make it clear and then call 911. Just let them know, give them your address. Okay, obviously you had to call 911 before, but a lot of times people say, call 911 first. But if it's the bad guys coming in, they're kicking your door in. Yeah. You don't have to call. You know, can you hold, please? Okay, I'll, I'll wait for you. And meanwhile, this guy's kicking my door in. So yeah. you really don't have time for that. So, but if you have a time, obviously call 911 first, and then you could protect yourself. But uh, if you don't have time, you're going to end up calling 911 after everything happened. Okay, so call 911, give them your address, tell them what happened. You had an intruder, and you had to protect yourself, and tell them, and just hang up the phone. Don't say anything anymore. Okay? They're gonna keep asking you questions and everything you say is gonna be recorded, okay? Mm -hmm. Then, after that, call your lawyer. Mm -hmm. Tell him what happened and he's gonna tell you what to do. Now, some people say, what, you know, what, what if I don't have a lawyer, okay? 
in a crazy situation like that, in the middle of the night, there's a very good chance you're not going to get your lawyer on the phone anyway. Unless you have like USCCA, I think they have a lawyer that's going to answer your phone 24-7. So that's a, that's a really good hotline. But if you don't have that, you know, don't try to find a lawyer, okay? Just after that, when the, you know, when, and, and once you tell everything, make sure your gun is safe. When the cops come in, make sure that they know that you're the good guy, you're the homeowner, and your gun is safe, okay? And, and you have, I believe you have 48 hours before you make any kind of statement. Mm -hmm. So just, you know, you know, you, you know, just tell them, you know, I'm the homeowner, he came in and treating, I felt the immediate danger, I had to protect myself, and that's it. Now, they're going to ask you a lot of questions. When people go through, you know, a traumatic situation like that, they're going to talk. They want to talk to somebody. And the cops are really good at saying stuff like, oh, man, you did such a good job. You know, he's a bad guy. He's dead. Thank God for that. And they're going to say stuff like, you know, are you okay? And you're feeling better. And, and then they're going to ask you something like, you know, were you angry? Were you nervous? And everything you say is recorded. Mm -hmm. So, problem with the law nowadays if the bad guy is dead, he he already paid the ultimate price for his punishment, mm -hmm. right? So now the prosecutor is gonna be aiming to prosecute you, no more criminal. He's dead and gone. So for three months or three weeks or whatever, they're gonna go through every tape, every second of everything mm -hmm. to build case against you, mm -hmm. not for you. Mm -hmm. So everything you said, let's say, oh man, I was so angry or I was so nervous. They're gonna say like. Maybe you shot too early because you're too nervous. Or maybe you shot them out of anger or rage or whatever. Okay, mm -hmm. so uh, you don't want to say anything. If the cop says anything, just tell them, I'm going to talk to my lawyer or I have a lawyer coming. I'll give my statement later. And, and you know, you have the right. Now, as soon as you tell the cops, I'm going to talk to my lawyer or I'm going to have my lawyer come, they stop talking to you because, you know, they don't want to get in trouble too. Okay, so make sure... Once you give a very precise statement, you stop. Never pick up your shells. A lot of times, we're so used to picking up our empty shell. After shooting, you see people picking up their shells, right? That's a no-no, okay? Because if you pick up your shells or move it or whatever, uh, prosecutors might say, like, maybe he didn't shoot it from here. Maybe he shot it from there. Mm -hmm. Everything changes, okay? So leave everything as is, okay? And wait for the cop. And when the cop comes, give him very short exact statement no more because once you say something you it's very hard to go back on your words later mm -hmm. you know it's all recorded now that they got body cam it's mm -hmm. every second is recorded okay mm -hmm. so uh that's something that you need to know now uh as we know that uh virginia laws and a lot of state law have a law about how to have your guns in your house, in the safe. If something happens, I know exactly where it is. My wife knows where it is. But if you have kids at home, you have to follow the law and make sure it's locked up and all that stuff, okay? When you hear a mistake of a noise, like intruder coming in, let's say broken window, or somebody bumping into your sofa downstairs or you know, or your dining table because they don't know the terrain, they're bumping into things, right? First thing that a lot of people do, including my wife, would say like, be quiet. They stay really quiet, right? And then the worst thing that I've seen is people pick up their gun, leave their room looking for the bad guy. Mm -mm. Okay. Never do that because let's face it, if the bad guy is downstairs, because most bedrooms are upstairs, second floor, everything else is the first floor. Bad guy's usually downstairs, you're upstairs. You have your gun, you're walking out. Is that gonna make a noise? Mm -hmm. It's kinda crick, 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 right? Mm -hmm. So the bad guy downstairs, he knows you're coming. Mm -hmm. He got his gun ready for you. So this I forgot his name, but he, that the real famous football star at his house, he did the same thing. He he heard something. His wife, his wife told him, he, you know, he heard something. He got his gun out, being a macho man, got his gun, walking down the stairs. He got shot three times, and he dropped the gun. Okay, because mm -hmm. that guy's behind the wall, getting ready for you. Because he heard you coming, right? Mm -hmm. And another thing is that so many uh, market try to sell you lights or lasers for home defense. Mm -hmm. Worst thing you can do. Even the FBI will not uh, recommend it. FBI actually have a different home where they actually hold their flashlight from here and their gun here. So when the bad guy shoots at the light, he's shooting at your hand, mm -hmm. right? Because when the bad guy comes, comes, sees you coming with a light, guess what he's gonna shoot at? He's gonna shoot at the light. Yeah. So when you have the light in the gun and you have it up like this, the light is right in front of your face right. mm -hmm. or in your heart. Sure. Right, so when he's shooting at your light, he's gonna hit you, yeah. and mm -hmm. and you're gone. Now, 
at your home, who needs the light? Is it going to be you or the bad guy? That guy needs it. Guy needs exactly, it. because you know your house, right? Yeah, yeah. Every night I go to the bathroom without turning my light on. Mm -hmm. I don't bump into anything. And if I had to, I could go downstairs with my eyes closed, feeling things. I know exactly where things are, right? Mm -hmm. The bad guy, he doesn't know anything about your house. So he needs the light. Now, a lot of times people say like, yeah, but what about the cops, policemen, you know, FBI? They all got the lights, right? Yeah, because they're going into unfamiliar territory. They're not going into their house. They're going into unfamiliar territory and they have to make certain they know what they're shooting at. And they got a team of guys. They got three or four guys with lights in all different directions. Mm -hmm. When you have one light and you're looking at it, you have a ton of vision where the light is shining. Everything is very, very dark. Mm -hmm. Now, if it was completely dark, your pupil opens up and you could see things, right? right? When you have a light, your pupil focus, everything else is completely dark. Mm -hmm. So trying to find a small tunnel vision with a light, trying to find the bad guy, it becomes more difficult. Okay, so again, you don't need the light, the bad guy does, okay? So and and having a laser beam is even worse because if the bad guy sees a laser beam doing you this, what is he thinking? Yeah. Shit, he's got gun. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He's gonna shoot me as soon as the laser touches me, I'm I'm dead. So at this point, he just wants to shoot you as fast as he can because he knows you have a, at the end of the laser, the bullet's coming. So again, in your house, you know your territory, he doesn't. But if he's waiting and you're coming out with a gun, with a light or with a laser, doing this everywhere, then he's getting ready for you, okay? Yeah. So, so uh, no light, no laser, you know, I'll stay away from it. And... Another thing is that home defense, I don't recommend uh, red dot, okay? Because a lot of times when you have a red dot on and trying to find the red dot in a like nervous situation, that becomes very difficult too. Honestly, at home, the maximum distance we have is five to three yards. So my home defense guns or my EDC, it doesn't have any you know red dots or anything else. It's just point and shoot, that's it, okay? Now, if we train ourselves to shoot with a red dot, when you have your gun up, what are you looking for? You're looking for the red dot. You're not even looking at the back guy. You're going, oh shit, I can't see my yeah. red dot, right? Yeah. But if you train to point and shoot, it doesn't really matter, okay? And the split second is what's going to count. Okay, when are you allowed to use your deadly force? Okay, number one is immediate danger, okay? Now, if you feel the immediate danger upon you, you're allowed to use your gun, okay? Now, a lot of times people think like, what, what is immediate danger, right? Does that mean the bad guy has to have a gun? No. Does that mean the bad guy has to have a knife? No. Let's say I am you know, 125 pound lady. Now if I see a big guy, like three, 400 pound guys, two, three guys coming at me, and I know they, you know, I know they mean to hurt, you know, hurt me, and I keep saying, don't stop, don't stop. I keep saying it, but if they continue to come, I'm in immediate danger. People could beat you to death. That's sure. not, or, you know, or cripple you or whatever. So when you feel, uh, immediate danger is that when you keep saying stop, don't, stop, don't, and they come in a way that they want to hurt you, you are in immediate danger, okay? Now, again, I seen a, some class in, you know, YouTube channel where they, you know, you know where they teach how to fight with their shotgun because the back guy might not have a gun. <laughs> now, if somebody trying to grab my shotgun, is that an immediate danger or not? Yeah, sure, yeah. 100% <laughs> is immediate danger, man. I, I don't consider myself as a weak guy, but if I seen a guy who is a lot, lot stronger than I am, and, it's, and if they're drugged up, because a lot of guys are druggies, they have a superhuman power. Mm -hmm. you know? mm -hmm. Taking my shotgun away from me, it's not even a problem. Mm -hmm. And when they take your shotgun away, there's a very high chance he's going to shoot you with it. So, <laughs> yeah. yeah, definitely. So if somebody's trying to grab your shotgun, don't fight. So I always say have your shotgun on your side, so when somebody grabs your muzzle, you could pull back and just fire it. Now, if you have it up here, if somebody takes your muzzle away, you can't fight it. Mm -hmm. He has the advantage of the level. So he right. could, so he has the leverage. And he could stab you or shoot you with the other hand. But if you have it down here, you could just take one step back, pull and shoot. That's it. Now, second thing is when there's no way to escape. Again, I told, I told you, if, if you try to get out, somebody else is blocking your way. That's, that's no way out. You have a back door, but you have a, your family upstairs, there's nowhere. You, you know, you have all the right to protect yourself from there, okay? Number three is, uh, you didn't start or you didn't escalate it, okay? For example, let's say, uh, 
that guy came in trying to steal your TV or, or whatever, and you say like, "Hey, stop!" And he says, like, "Okay, man, I'm so sorry. I, I, you know, I'm leaving." And you say like, "No, you don't, you mother." You know, and they say, and just keep escalating it. And finally, if the bad guy reacts to it, and you shoot him and say like, "Well," but you know, you you can't do that. So if the bad guy said like, "Hey, I'm so sorry. I'm leaving right now. Let him go. Call 911. Tell him what he looks like. Don't try to stop him. Okay." Because it's not worth it. And honestly, there are a lot of crazy bad guys out there, but there are a lot of bad guys who's not there to kill you. They, mm -hmm. you know, they just want your TV or something, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. Other thing is when you don't have any other option, okay. You know, uh, I talk about this, you know, I, you know, I, you know people are asking me, I carry taser, I carry, uh, you know, spray, I carry gun, da 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 da. Now, if, for example, if you have different options, and if you shoot somebody, let's say you had a taser and you had a shotgun, and you and at, at an immediate danger, you sh you know you know you shot somebody with a shotgun, but they see they see you had a taser, they say why don't you use a taser first, it's things like that. Okay, now worst thing you could have is a spray. You know when the back eyes is really hyped up, spray doesn't do anything. Uh, you know he might cough at it, but he's not gonna stop. I've seen it. You know I've seen a YouTube where. The person gets tased and he's still fighting back. Mm -hmm. It doesn't do you any good. So have one option, okay? Because we have to assume the bad guy has a weapon, okay? Now, if he doesn't have any weapon, you could fight with him with a taser and try to survive with it. But if he doesn't go down with a taser and if he has chance to shoot you with his gun, he will, okay? So just has one choice of weapon, that's the best way to do it. About three, four years ago, the total number of you know, violent crime in USA Guess how many? Per year. Per year? Violent Nation crime. Nationwide violent, nationwide violent crime. Mm. Uh, I wouldn't even hazard a guess. 50,000 or something? I don't, I'm not sure at all. Much higher. Much higher? Much higher? Much higher. 300,000? Wow, Much higher. Wow. 700,000? About twice that. So about three about three years ago it was 1.2 million. Now it's about 1.6 million. Mm -hmm. Violent crime. We're not talking about petty theft. We're right, talking about right. violent crime. Right. Okay. So a lot of times people think like because we live in such a safe neighbor. If something happens, because I've never seen anybody that says, Well, I expected it. It's mm -hmm. always unexpected. Mm -hmm. So if if you know what to do and if you're constantly thinking what to do, when something happens, then you know what to do. Mm -hmm. But if you're thinking like I live in a safe neighbor, mm -hmm. Not yeah, gonna happen to me. It's not gonna happen to me. Mm -hmm. yeah, they said never have an oh my god reaction mm -hmm. because that's when you know you're dead, okay? <laughs> <laughs> like when you see a bad guy and when you feel the immediate danger, you have to hear a word, the sound beep in your hand, you have to go to the action, okay? Mm -hmm. Not oh my god. <laughs> mm -hmm. right. Too late. So anyway, that's a lot of crime mm -hmm. and people are not aware of it, okay? Mm -hmm. Mm. And even the mass shooting, I'm sure you guys know because it's on the news so much, like up to last year or before, it was about 350 cases a year. Now we broke the case halfway through the year. Mm -hmm. So we're about doubling it this year. So that's mass shooting. Mass shooting is not any gun shooting. I think there has been a number of six people four involved, people. four people involved. And yeah, yeah so it's that's... pretty low nowadays. Yeah, <laughs> it's keep going lower, right? <laughs> right. right. <laughs> yeah, so... You have to know what to do. And you know, honestly, before I used to carry a small uh, Caltech P32 for self-defense as a pocket pistol, you know, I ditched that a long time because now we have so many mass shooting out there and they're all carrying AR. Yeah. And if I got P32 trying to gunfight him at 15, 20 yards, I'm a dead man, sure. you know? Yeah. As I mentioned, a lot of times we have our gun up like this. Mm. Now, when you have your gun up like this, you have a very narrow tunnel vision. You can't see anything below the you know, and and honestly, when the bad guy comes in and you have your gun here, mm -hmm. he's not reacting to you. But you, as soon as you put your gun up, he's gonna react really fast. Sure, okay, man. so so we, we, when you have your gun down here, and if you see the bad guy with a gun or whatever, don't wait for him. Just yes. fire from the hip. And you know what you know what I'm gonna teach you is like fire from the hip, and then we're gonna race and shoot. So first, bam, bam, not bam, bam. Okay, yeah. because you wanna hit him first. I tell my students, you know, if, if you hear something, make sure you scream and shout and say, I call 911, yeah. I have 12 gauge. Just let them know you have a gun. And if you could have a blank, like a, you know, you know, like a blank ammunition in your pistol, sometimes I'll just, just shoot a blank. Just let them know you got a gun. Oh, okay. 
And, and as soon as they hear the gunshot, they're not going to come looking for you. Yeah, they're right. going to run. Right. In my bedroom, I bought this alarm system from Amazon. I think I paid like 35 bucks. It's very loud and it comes with two remote and it comes with two uh, motion detector. And that's all I have in my, oh. my house. So every hallway, I have a two, you know, motion detector and that thing is loud. I mean, really loud. So I have one remote. Uh, before I leave the house, I could turn it on and turn it off. And then I'll have one beside the bed. And I tell my wife, if, if, I'm always there, but if I'm not home, if I hear something, just set off the alarm. Mm -hmm. And if, he, if the back guy hear that loud silence going on, he's going to run out. He's not going to come looking for you upstairs. No, no, yeah, so, he's got so much time. Right. Yeah, so, he's thinking it's, uh, cops are coming up. Exactly. Know. And just yeah. let him know. I call 911. And if they have alarm, push the button, let the silence go on. Same with the car. You know, if I see a, if I don't feel safe, like, like when I go used to go fishing and stuff with my family, in, you know, late in the night, and you know, it, and you know, we're coming to our parking lot, and I don't feel safe, I'll just set off the panic button. Right, 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 right. And the people were like, my wife used to go crazy, like, "What are you doing? You're so loud!" And we're like, "Who cares, right?" That's right. We're not here to be yeah, stealth. Right? Exactly. We're, we're... Now, if I hear, you know, <laughs> honestly, every time I push the panic button, nobody jumped out and ran. <laughs> That's right. But who cares, right? Yeah. But at yeah, least I know it's safe. Yeah. Now, if I have my whole family going there, and if some guy comes out behind my car with a gun pointing at us, well, I'm a dead dog, you right. know? You know right. I have to do everything they say. But if panic button, nobody thinks of a panic button. I told them panic button is there for a reason. Sure. Right. Like, so use it. To and bring attention as, to the situation, right? right? And yeah. spook them out. They're going to yeah. run out like crazy. Yeah. You know, you, you know if, if they're hiding, mostly they're going to hide behind your car. This is a funny thing. They think they're going to hide somewhere else. They're not. They're hiding behind your car. Like I used to drive a forerunner, there's a plenty of room to hide behind, mm -hmm. right? So, and if the car they're hiding behind goes off with the sirens, they're going to run like crazy. Mm -hmm. Your plan is great where you want to stay, wait for him to come, let him make all the noise. And if mm -hmm. he never comes, just wait for the 911 mm -hmm. to come and say like, we're here, we're safe, okay? Yeah, right. Don't go out trying to make sure he's safe. Mm -hmm. That's for the cops, not mm -hmm. for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mine is such a different situation because I have a, a daughter that's on the way in the basement, mm -hmm. and then we're in a townhouse. We're way upstairs, uh -huh. and then I have a son that's <laughs> in the middle of the bedroom. So right. it's just a mess as far uh -huh. as logistically. I don't know what we do except lock her door, and we're calling nine. We're all right. calling nine one one. Well, when I, you have family out there, you have to make sure because there was one case. Actually, one of my rental property. Uh, she called the cops and the cops came in and they arrested this drunken guy and it, it you know it turned out to be her son who doesn't live with her anymore oh, wow. but he got drunk and he came home in the middle of the night like 2 or 3 a.m making the racket good thing she didn't have a gun with her she right. would have shot him wow. seriously so son, when he yeah. so when he called 911 she was saying i have an intruder he's coming closer i don't know what to do now if the 911 I'm sure they ask, do you have a gun? And, and if she says, yes, I have a gun, get ready. And if it comes in, shoot them. Because I've seen them telling that on YouTube. So, you know, you have to make sure that it's not your family member. So first thing you do, is like if you have a multiple family in different level, if you hear something that's not right, just say, hey, who's out there? Mm -hmm, if mm -hmm. it's your son, it's going to say like, hey, dad, I'm Kevin, don't shoot me, yeah, <laughs> you know? Right, right. But if they don't say anything or if somebody runs out, that's fine, you know? But if they don't say anything, be ready because, right. you know, yeah, 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 that's what I do is I have them sleep with their door locked yeah. at a minimum and that way, you know, and they have their cell phones so we can call each and other. And let's communicate, yeah. Yeah, at least, but yeah, it is, it's hard when you have, when you're spread out like that, but right. the good thing but I... But you have your dog too. Yeah, I got a pit bull, so <laughs> oh, there you she's go. out at night and then we have the alarm. And then Who's out there of people? I put, I put steel <laughs> kick plates on all the doors uh, as well, so you yeah. can't kick our doors in. Good for you. And then alarm system, so I've got like a three-tier There you go, I think you're ready. <laughs> well, it's just, I lived in Maryland for 15 years over there, David, so yeah, it's... Uh, yeah, so was, next, so that's the next thing I was going to talk about. Lock, make, or make sure your doors and windows are locked. Uh -huh. My daughter, when she went off to college, I actually went there and bought the, you know, that small latch where you could latch from inside. Because she was living in an apartment with like two, three different, you know, roommates. And I'm not saying I don't trust the roommates, but then I don't trust the roommate's friend. Sure. You know right. what I'm saying? Right. You might have a perfect roommate, but they have different friends. Yeah. And they say like, you know, you know, Rachel's coming at like midnight because she's a medical student, she's by herself, whatever. And, you know, so just make sure it's a small latch. 
and that thing is not easy to break in. So make sure everything is locked. Again, alarm is on. You'd be surprised how many people have alarm at home and never use it. Only 40% of people use it. Number one reason why they don't use it because it's a pain in the butt. Number two, because of the pet. And nowadays they have a, like a pet safe alarm where the, you know, it won't catch small movements, but it's expensive. Again, I, I have a very simple alarm system, very loud alarm system. And you know, when I live, I put my you know, sky in the room where there is no motion detection. So that's not gonna set it off. And there is no way to enter from that side too. So that's fine. So, right. you know, make sure you use your alarm because you've already taken my classes. We're not gonna cover the safeties or how to handle the guns, but we will do it once we are out at the range. And okay, benefit of shotgun versus uh, handgun and pros and cons. So pros. Now, the best thing about shotgun is that you got, you only need one shot and he's not fighting back with you because mm -hmm. I've been hunting all my life since junior high. Okay. Now, only deer that I've seen that literally like gets hit and drop and never get back up is with a uh, 15 pellet buckshot. Mm -hmm. That's, that, I think my shotgun has three inch shell and that thing is so hard. And it's got 15 pellets and each pellet is the size of nine millimeter caliber. So we got 15 shots coming at you at once. So you could, I could literally see the deer like four legs off the ground drop and we, and a lot of times they won't even kick, they're gone already. Mm -hmm. Now, I've never seen a 12 gauge buckshot penetrate all the way. Mm -hmm. It's from the, this side to this side long and they, st they usually stop here. They might have some underneath the, you know, hide. Unless it's a small deer, I've never seen it penetrate. Mm -hmm. Now, that's the benefit of shotgun. If you shoot a shotgun at a trap shooting, you see them start falling around 30, 40 yards. Right, okay. Right. Mm -hmm. Now, when you shoot 12, I mean, the 2 to 3 or 9 millimeter, it's going to go to the cardboard and it's going to keep going into your neighbor, your next room, yeah. whatever. Now, shotgun, boom, yeah, it's got a really hard impact. It's got a lot of energy, but it doesn't travel. Mm -hmm. Okay. So mm -hmm. it's safe. It's safer for your family. It's definitely safer for your neighbor. Okay. Mm -hmm. So there's another, you know, a benefit of it. Now, and it's also easy to aim. Now, we've done this before, just because you don't aim, because it's a shotgun, you, you could hit the target without aiming. No, no, we, we have to practice, but it's a lot easier than a pistol or a, uh, or a rifle. So much easier. Yeah. And now the, now the cons are that you, you need two hands. Now, with a one hand, you know, with a pistol, you know, you could hold your wife's hand, you could hold the cell phone, you could open the doors, you could do a lot of things with one hand with a pistol. Now, with a shotgun, you're very limited. Mm -hmm. it's, it's even hard to open the door because, you, you know, the shotgun is in front of you. You know, you can't call 911, you know, all that stuff. Now, other con is that it only holds, well, now there's a lot of shotguns, a lot of shell, but, you know, five or six, you know, seven rounds maximum, five rounds, four rounds, that's it. So, with a shotgun, you have to make sure it's always loaded. Mm -hmm. So today what we're gonna practice is that we're gonna shoot and we're gonna reload and we're gonna shoot and we're gonna reload again. So a lot of time when you have a gun, you know, you know, you know, when you're in a gunfight at your heart trying to fight with somebody, you shoot somebody with a shotgun three or four times, he's gonna either run or you have a place to hide behind, mm -hmm. you know, behind the door, behind the wall, whatever. That's when you wanna keep loading, okay? With, especially with a, a pump action, you don't, because when we practice safe shooting, we shoot and, and you know, we leave the action open. Never leave the action open when you're self-defending, okay? Mm -hmm. When you're reloading, reload with the action closed mm -hmm. and ready to go. So, so we're shooting and the action is closed. We flip, we're gonna reload. And if I need to, I can shoot from here. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Because it's loaded. But if you have the action open, it's not only hard to reload, but at the same time, you don't have time to pump and shoot somebody, okay? Mm -hmm. So, always load it, be ready. So those are the cons with the shotgun, okay? But uh, for my self-defense at home, I depend on my shotgun because again, when you have an intruder coming in, you're not gonna end up needing 30 rounds. Mm -hmm. You know, <laughs> at, right. at maximum, four or five rounds, either he's gone or dead, that's right. it. Sure. But if you're thinking, I need 30 rounds, not really. Not unless you're out in the open, you're hiding behind the cars, and you're constantly shooting each other. You know, it's not like that. Hey Dave, what's the deal with this ring? I see both ways where they say, and we were talking about this too, Sean, where you, like mine holds, the magazine holds five. 
but uh, there's sometimes he's on YouTube where it's, okay if you constantly leave the weapon loaded mm -hmm. that it's not good for the spring. Now for the tube, it's not a problem. Okay. For the tube, uh, you know the you know where you fit the tubes. Yeah. Because the shells are perfectly aligned, that's not a problem. Now with the AR style, you know, where, you know where you're pushing down the shells into the magazine, right. because spring is pushing against the shells and the shells is plastic. Right. So over time, they're gonna crunch. So, and if it becomes over shape, it's not gonna fit into the tube. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So that's a negative about having a you know a well, AR type I mean, yeah, shotgun shell. Yeah, now, right, right, one thing I noticed that the shotgun that I have, the, you know, the 20 gauge, you know, that the, how the shell at the at the very end part is, is brass, mm -hmm. is pressing only against the brass, not actual shells. Okay. So I tested it, I left it in there for five, six days and pulled it out. Everything looks fine and shoots fine. So unless you was, I think they made it in a way for home defense where it's not causing the problem, okay? okay. So unless that, uh, usually with my pump action, I, I have four in the tube and action open and just leave it like that. Oh, okay. And you know, if I need to, I could just pump it again and be ready for it. That's the basics of today. Any questions?